Hi, how are you? Here is Stanley speaking. First of all, I want to wish you a great year of monkey, as China was celebrating the Lunar New Year last week. Today, I will talk about color temperature, as it is an important visual ingredient that can help to express emotion through your paintings. In the broadest sense, color temperature describes the degree of warmth visually found in a color. Here, colors can fall into one of the two groups: warm or cool colors. A warm color is one that gives the viewer a sense of warmth, energy, or heat, such as the colors of the sun. A cool color is a color that gives the sense of coolness, coldness, or stillness, such as the colors of the ocean. Often, artworks have either warm or cool colors dominating, as a strong emphasis on one color temperature usually creates an image with a strong sense of coherence. Color temperature is not always used to describe the relationship between different colors, as it is sometimes applied to difference between two variants of the same color. When a green is mixed with yellow, it becomes a warm green. When it is mixed with blue, it becomes a cool green. There is an interesting temperature relationship between light and shadow. The color temperature of the shadow will be the opposite of the color temperature of the light. If we have a warm light source, then the shadow will appear relatively cooler. If the light source is a cool one, then the colors found in the shadows will appear warmer. This warm-cool relationship of light and shadow is subtle. Here, what I have on the screen is the color wheel, a basic tool to study the color theory. By turning the wheel, it can give you different color mixing results. It was mostly useful for traditional painters when they have to mix the color pigments on a palette. For digital artists, life became easier when we have the option to color pick any pixel on one image to see where this specific color is located on the color spectrum. On this wheel, you have the three primary colors, and the rest are secondary and intermediate colors. Different terms such as hue, tint, tone, shade, intensity, or value are also well explained on the front of the color wheel. On the back, there's more complex illustration of the color relationships, where you can see all the tints, tones, and shades of each color located on the front. You can also see which two colors are the complementary colors. The complementary colors can usually accent each other's color vibrancy to the best effect. You can also find few different extra definitions for monochromatic, analog, achromatic, etc. When I was in college, we usually had the theory exams on the color wheel. However, I find it it's better to apply the most important notions on the color wheel into the paintings instead of memorizing the definition of the terms. Here, I have made two selections of warm and cool dominated images. On the first row, you have five warm dominated paintings. On the second half, you have five cool dominated paintings. You see how colors can evoke certain specific emotions already. As I've said, a warm color is the one that gives the viewer a sense of warmth, energy, or heat, such as the colors of the sun. And a cool color is a color that gives a sense of coolness, coldness, or stillness, such as the colors of the ocean. But sometimes the rule can be broken too. See how the mermaid scene contains a lot of actions with the dynamic waves. But that painting is still cool dominated due to the fact that the action is happening in the ocean. This is interesting to say that within a warm dominated image, usually you can still see some cool local colors to balance out the image. Here, the green on the leaves are cool color compared to the two females and the sunny sky. 
here the green on the back of the chair and the green decorative patterns on the wallpaper it's a cool color compared to the golden dress here again observe how the vegetation on the grass is a cool color compared to the rest of the golden palette within the image it is probably the absolute warm dominated image as i don't see any cool local colors on it the emotion that it evokes is almost very bold and extreme let's look at some of the cool dominated images you see how the color of her hair and the light yellow of the fur are warm color compared to the icy rocks and the water and here the colors of the bricks and some of the clothes on the characters are warm color compared to the sky and the ground and here the colors of the skin and the fabric are warm colors next to the ocean here again, the clothes on the characters and the ground textures are warm colors compared to the large sky and water surface. Those samples demonstrate the painters usually used opposite color temperature on some specific areas within a warm or cool dominated palette, as the combination offers a more interesting visual interplay. Let's do an exercise of making the warm dominated painting into a cool dominated painting to see if it can evoke a different emotion from us. I take those two for this demonstration since they're very similar in terms of compositions and subject matter. It can facilitate the comparison. I bring up a color balance adjustment layer, go to the shadow channel, shift all the dark values to yellow, red, and green. See how the shaded areas start to look like the shaded color in the warm dominating one? Now I do the same color shifting for the mid-tones towards yellow, red, and green. And finally a color shifting towards yellow and red for the brightest values. Turn the layer on and off to see the before and after. Do you realize how suddenly the whole palette has dramatically changed? Now let's try to match the warm dominated image to a cool dominated image. I bring up a color balance adjustment layer, go to the shadow channel, shift all the dark values to blue, cyan, and green. I do the same color shifting for the midtones and the highlights. Let's check the before and after. Now the two female figures are standing under a clear blue sky instead of in a golden sunset setting. You can even use a photo filter to adjust the overall color balance of the image. You can also use value masking tool to reveal all the yellow highlight underneath. You can see that the green tones are tinted with cyan. Observe how the whole palette has been altering by using a non-destructive method with adjustment layers.
Now, I can even switch the position of those two images on my selection in Photoshop. If you didn't see the original selections, you won't be able to tell what were their initial color palette. So, hope the notion of color temperature can help you to make your overall painting more coherent with the emotions that you want to express. I'm thinking that I should probably do a little chat about the color script later on, as the color temperature is really a key player for the color script's creation process. So, don't forget to subscribe if you like the videos that I've been making so far. See you next time! Bye!